the Democrat Party, the party of subversion, agree or disagree. That's the topic of today's Bold and Blunt. And I'm your host, Cheryl Chumley, giving you a Christian conservative look at today's news, politics, culture, and events. Are modern Democrats just basically the party of subversion in America? First, let's define subversion. One dictionary definition is this, the undermining of the power and authority of an established system or institution. Seems obvious to me. Democrats, more like communists, more like socialists, more like Marxists. How can they possibly not be the party of subversion? Before I get into more of that, I want to quickly mention if you like Bold and Blunt, you may get Bold and Blunt at edify.app, at Real Life Network, at WashingtonTimes.com, or wherever podcasts are offered. And I, I want to point out if you go to WashingtonTimes.com, scroll to the bottom of the page, check out the newsletter section, you will find my newsletter, uh, Bold and Blunt with Cheryl Chumley. And you can subscribe to that just by putting in your email. You will get not only my Tuesday and Thursday Bold and Blunt podcast, but you will also get the commentaries that I write every day at the Washington Times, which gives you the ability to fight these far leftists, right? Arming you with the facts, the bullet points you need to fight the Democrats, the party of subversion. Democrats, what do they do to support the Constitution these days? Can you think of anything? I can't. I really can't. So go to the Democratic Party's platform, right? Here's a challenge. Go to the Democratic Party's platform. Read through what they support, what they advocate, what they want uh, for America, their vision for America's future, and then go to the Socialist Party's platform or the Communist Party's platform or the Progressive Party's platform and look for the differences. There may be a little bit of nuancing with the language, but if you think on what the platforms promote, they're pretty much one and the same. The one that's different is the Republican Party platform. The Constitution Party platform is definitely decidedly different, but if you look at these parties' platforms, if you look at their vision statements and their bullet points and their guiding principles, where they want to take America, socialists, communists, Democrats, they're all pretty much one and the same. And that... That is in direct opposition to the limited government guarantees our Constitution is supposed to provide. We're founded on the American exceptionalist idea of God-given individual liberties. And anything that deviates from that is a sort of subversion, right? It, it sort of undercuts what America's government is supposed to be. And so look at the 2020 Democratic Party platform and read through what they say. The economy is not working for the American people, say the Democrat Party. So that party, the Democrats, think it's incumbent on government to allocate resources in a fairer, more equitable, just way in their minds which means taking from Peter to pay Paul. The coronavirus, the Democrat Party says in its platform, has revealed much of the unjustness of America's economy. And so it's incumbent on Democrats to right those unjust wrongs. Housing is a human right, which is sort of true, right? I mean, you have a right for shelter, life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. Those are God-given individual rights. But where the Democrats deviate here, their little spin, their little demonic type of insertion into that core concept, housing is a right, a human right, is 
they think that because it's a right, it automatically means it's a taxpayer-funded right. So Democrats want to take from Peter to pay for Paul to live equally, right, with all the other Peters. It's not enough to have just any old shelter from the storm. Democrats want you to look at those who have better shelters than you do and demand in a fair economy, in a fair world, the right to have equal housing. It's not enough to have that $200,000 home if all your neighbors have $400,000 homes. You have to have that same $400,000 home or it's not equal. And because you don't have enough money to pay for that $400,000 home, well, that doesn't matter. That's still an inequality. And in Democrats' minds, taxpayers need to step in and pay for that equal share of housing. It's not fair. It's not the individual's fault that he or she was born into circumstances that aren't as wealthy as others, right? It, it's unfair. It's unfair that God created these unequal states between people. It's not that poor dude's fault that his parents weren't wealthy. It's up to taxpayers now to even out the playing field. So that that's Democrat Party mindset. And that certainly is completely counter to what founding fathers saw for America. The, the pull up by your own bootstraps type of mentality, the uh, succeed based on your own hard work and independence and entrepreneurial way of thinking and creative force. That, that's all founding fathers and that, that's all basic free market principles that government's role in an economy is to provide the opportunity by way of an open door for all to create and produce, but step back from the actual creation, production, and sales process and just allow, allow creativity to guide, allow supply and demand to dictate success versus failures. The Democrat Party mindset is that the government should step in and sort of control the entire process from creation to production and development to sales, marketing, revenues, and so forth. That it's not fair that just because, you know, Joe has more talent than Jane, that Joe should make more money than Jane because more people want Joe's products and nobody wants Jane's products. That's not fair according to Democrats. They think that because Joe makes so much and he has greater skill, then he should naturally share with Jane because poor Jane doesn't have the same equal amount of skill or talent. And so government under Democrats should rightly, morally force Joe to pay Jane's way. So Democrat Party principles, Democrat Party platforms, totally in line with the communist way of thinking, the communist control, top-down control, the communist stifling of individual creativity and desire, the communist killing of an individual's soul, right? Because that's what communists in the end do. Democrat Party principles, Democrat Party platforms, totally in line with this way of thinking. There is nothing about the Democrat Party that screams individual accountability, right? There's nothing about the Democrat Party principles or platform that call out for consequences for one's actions. It's all about, it's not fair. You have more than I do. I need to have the same as you. It's unjust. It's unequal. The Democrat Party, right, wants... Social Security, of course. Republicans seeded on that point a long time ago. The Democrat Party wants health care, universal health care for all, paid by all, right? Equal health care, equal health care coverage paid by taxpayers. Republicans under Barack Obama sort of seeded the idea that health care as a right 
is one and the same as health care as a taxpayer funded right. That's why we got Obamacare, because Republicans gave up that fight. So this isn't to say that Republican Party platforms are 100 percent better than the Democrat parties. The Republicans have strayed, too. But it is to say that if you take a look at Democrat Party platform, Socialist Party, Communist Party, Progressive Party, they're one and the same. The Republican Party, at least in rhetoric, still advances a lot more free principles, free party platforms that are more in line with founding father goals and visions and principles than the Democrat Party. Democrat Party wants a progressive tax system that punishes that punishes achievement, that punishes the wealthy, strips from the wealthy, outright seizes, steals from the wealthy to give to the poor. Founding Fathers envisioned a system where wealth was redistributed only based on charitable outreach. So if you were wealthy, then you, because of your religious principles or your moral compass, naturally gave to those in need. They didn't see the government redistributing wealth based on demand for more from the poorer factions. That's socialism, right? Higher minimum wages. That's what the Democrat Party wants. Higher minimum wages for jobs that are low skill or no skill. Used to be in this country when I was growing up that all these $15 an hour jobs, right, now paid minimum wage because, because they were low skill. They were entry level or they were second jobs or they were retirement, um, retiree supplemental income positions. They weren't meant to be careers. You didn't go and work at a $5.35 uh, an hour job and hope that it was going to pay your mortgage. That was stupid. That was, that was ridiculous thinking. You did that because you did it as a means of getting some income to save for your school, for your education, or for your training for a higher paying position in life where you could support yourself. Nowadays, we have the Democrat Party pretending as if these low skill or no skill jobs are supposed to support families of 12 kids. So they open the borders wide for people to come in from countries that have no concept of what it means to be an American citizen, that come from countries with governments that are socialist in nature or communist in nature. And so the people who are crossing the borders illegally by the droves under this wicked administration come with the mentality that government is supposed to provide from cradle to grave. That's not America. And so they come across into this country and then Democrats are oh so happy to represent them and kill the free market and kill capitalism and cry for corporations and businesses to ratchet up minimum wages. And so these minimum wage low skilled jobs are now paying at what used to be white collar, well-educated levels of pay in some instances. And then it makes the white collar educated positions of pay look back and say, hey, why aren't I getting paid even more? Why, why am I getting paid the same as these low skilled, zero skilled jobs? So the Democrat Party, very socialist, very communist in nature, which is to say subversive, right? And I have a guest today who has some freewheeling uh, thoughts. Very independent thinker. Love to have him on the show. He's been on before. His name is Robert Davi. You may recognize him from uh, films and movies. He just put out one f that he directed himself about the evil evils of the Biden family, the, the Biden crime family, Hunter Biden specifically. Robert Davi, thank you so much for being back on Bold and Blunt. It's great to have you here. It's great to be here. Thank you for having me, Cheryl. I love being 
bold and blunt. Excellent. And you are a great bold and blunt guest. I know that from past experience. And I've been checking out your Twitter feed recently. And if anybody, Uh, well, you you post some good stuff and you have a mind of your own, which is what makes this country great. I wanted to open first by talking about September 11th versus Afghanistan withdrawal. Back when September 11th occurred, that tragic day, we had some strong leadership in the White House and in New York City, Giuliani, George Bush, right? Both came out strong. Now fast forward to today to the puppet Joe Biden and the Afghanistan withdrawal, a very sad difference. Can you speak to how this country has changed in such a little amount of time? The country has not only had its legs chopped off, it's been castrated. And that's never more demonstrable than seeing Joe Biden and what he's done to the nation and what the left has done to our country. Um, To go into Afghanistan and not have a, after the the blood uh, and and treasure that was lost there, uh, not to have an exit strategy that protected American interests and the world interests and abdicating all the mineral rights to China. And it begs the question, as I, you know, I directed the movie My Son Hunter, where he made deals. Hunter made deals with the Communist Chinese Party and the spy chief of China and many other things that are now coming to light. When we did the film, no one believed some of the stuff. And now it's all coming to fruition, or at least it's coming, uh, people are investigating it and seeing things happen. So he abdicated the mineral rights to the Chinese. They went in there a week before they were negotiating that. And the minute we left, they've got the lithium rights and other minimal rights that create new green technologies in Afghanistan. Besides the alleged amount of, now I hear, I'm hearing different uh, reports on that, but uh, again, the, 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 the military, the, the people in charge of the military that Biden put in there, an absolute joke. It's an absolute farce. And uh, to have all that, the weaponry that was there and all our equipment that was there and to have the, the airport that was built so close to, uh, you know, uh, a, an enemy, perhaps, or something, someone that we need to be close to or have quick access to, we abdicated that modern, wonderful airport as well. So right. there's a ton of, besides the loss of life. Are, are you happy with how uh, Congress, well, Republicans in Congress are investigating Hunter Biden and the connection with Joe Biden and so forth? Are you happy with how that investigation is progressing? What's the name of this podcast? Bold and Blunt. So go ahead. Go for we it. We have nobody. I, well, we have very few people in the GOP that are bold and blunt. <laughs> we have a lot of people attached at the hip that pay lip service and then probably go behind the closed doors and they're smoking cigars or drinking or making some other backroom deals. Politics should not be the way it is today. Politics has been corrupted into, we are as, we are as the Politburo of Russia, of Soviet Russia. That's what we're looking more like than the Congress and the Senate that we were supposed to have. Um, The Democrats are much better at being passionate and eliciting an emotional response in the voter on an issue that is probably wrong, but they're better at selling it, better at getting out there and showing a passionate uh, frustration with the Republican Party, where the Republicans are so polite, the majority of them. And it's always perplexed me, Cheryl, why... In other words, if I was the leader of the House and there was a lie made by Joe Biden or an uh, accusation, I would have 50 senators on the steps of the Capitol and I would be I would be combating Schumer and Schiff and Pelosi and the corruptness of the left demonizing the the conservative movement. Uh, They don't fight hard enough. And the same thing with this. Why, why did they go on vacation? Right. They don't have to go on vacation. We have a pressing issue that time means everything. Now he shut down the Alaskan pipeline. You've got to take this guy out of commission. You've got to really go at it. But as you know what? 50 years in politics 
it's like a mafia family, the whole thing. It really is. <laughs> it's like a mafia family that has, uh, he knows where the bodies are buried. They all know. You know, you you made a comment a couple minutes ago about how politics shouldn't be like this, and yet it is, right? Do you do you blame Democ- Democrats squarely for the state of vicious politics that we have going on in this country, or do you think the the blame is shared by both parties? Let's put it this way: in some ways, it's there's been a reaction to the cons consistent barrage and the ignorance or not the the ignorance the look we watched the country go down the tubes two years yes we had an obama in office and when ferguson happened he had a chance a black white man had a chance to help unite this nation and he didn't do it he further separated us and we know listen let's not play games we know that there are people in that administration and in our government that have been useful idiots and paid off since the, you know, you had the communists in the 1920s. People don't want to talk about the big C. It shouldn't be called the Democratic Party. That's changed. That's Bobby Kennedy Jr., who they won't let uh, primary. He's a Democrat, but they won't let him primary because he's a purer Democrat than they are. They have gone to the Marxist communist left, and you got to call the spade a spade. And that's seditious to the United States of America, and we have more congressmen on the left and the right that that let it happen. I, I agree. And it's interesting that you just brought up about Kennedy um, and the problems he has with the Democrat Party uh, getting any kind of standing going there. Why do the Democrats just hate somebody like Kennedy who actually could draw in a lot of Republican voters if he were to be the Democrat Party candidate? Look, I have three guys, Trump, Vivek, and Kennedy. If those three guys could find a way to work together, it would be an amazing thing and unite this nation because their ideas are American first. And and, and Kennedy, they're, they're afraid because he exposes that aspect of the deep state that everyone pretends doesn't exist. It happened in Soviet Russia. You know, again, I urge everyone to see the movie Mr. Jones. You've heard of Walter Durant. Of course. The Pulitzer Prize winning New York Times guy that he he won Pulitzer Prize because he was covering Joseph Stalin in Russia, correct? <laughs> right. And he lied about Stalin. And this movie, Mr. Jones, shows you exactly what's going on, just like Oppenheimer shows you exactly how our government can demonize someone. They did the same techniques to Trump that they did to Oppenheimer, whether you're not, wherever the fence you are in Oppenheimer. But, you know... Trump got accused of dividing this nation. It wasn't Trump. Trump gave voice to the silent majority that's watched their, their, their souls be stuffed by the absurdity of the left. Not being able to say what the gender is of a child at birth, what the DNA of a child is at birth. I'm all for compassionate understanding of how someone chooses a lifestyle. That's not the question question is the overriding history of mankind and being able to uh so you you see the distortion of truth yes and there are people out there that they just they don't have a they they don't know where to go where to go with that frustration and we saw for two years or three years or before when nancy pelosi uh, and hillary clinton lost the election and she said on her speech the next day because she didn't do it the day she the next day she gave a speech she says i want all you people in the dark in the and i'm paraphrasing but basically all you people that go online all you warriors online all you people on the streets that da, 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 and go out and fight yes go out and fight now everybody uses a certain rhetoric but there's no insurrection against her We've seen Stacey Abrams and other people talk about the election. And it's almost like, how dare you? How dare you? In terms of New York and in Georgia. How dare you now want to, again, people saw 
an insurrection worse that happened in America for two years, what happened outside the White House with St. John's Church yep. and everything else. For two years, and a government that did nothing, it, meaning the left, the left not condemning. You know, so, I, mean, I, I think you gave a, a, a good rundown, really, of some of these issues that have just proven mind-boggling over the last couple of years in terms of the left's utter dishonesty and the media's willingness to cover for these lies. And I just wonder, what is America's way out now? Because it's certainly not in the political world. The, the Democrats would never allow a politician to unite America. They, you can't, you first have to excoriate the Democratic left that has now been seditious and subversive to the founding fathers of the United States of America. They've distorted it. It's true. It's a distorted, uh, uh, the way they're distorting human beings, they distorted the Constitution. And we're supposed to look at it and say, okay, it's fine. And not, so until you have these politicians that are in Washington, D.C., on the opposing side, that get a sense of absolute passionate discourse to be respectful, but it's got to be passionate in terms of being honest and finding out where you are subversive and who is being subversive. It's subversive to let people go into a store and rip off whatever they want. When somebody like Garbage Newsom has a state <laughs> and wants to complain about North Carolina and other states, when Garbage Newsom, look what he did to Look what he did to California. Garbage is, a, is an embarrassment. And yet they don't talk about it. They want to be nice to the guy. Let's be nice to Garbage Newsom. <laughs> well, no, no, no. <laughs> you, you got to call it. They can tear apart Trump. They can tear apart the MAGA movement. Joe Biden, when he first came on and he demonized everybody in the MAGA movement. Yep. You can demonize all of them. Now, I, I, I get frustrated because I'm tired of hearing how old Joe is. I don't care. That's not the issue. His policies, and I don't care if somebody's behind it, it's the policies that are destructive to the United States of America. E pluribus unum. And to have an open border like that, and to have congressmen go on break when we're having, and, and Eric Adams says New York is finished, but yet he wouldn't really call out Schumer and Schiff and Pelosi and the rest of the people that are in the, uh, you know, in, in, in the Congress there that have done nothing for immigration. Yep. But what bloated out? I mean, it's frustrating. It's, yeah. We need strong people that have ethics and that aren't afraid. They don't have to be invited to the White House to Joey Biden. You can't. You can't start that game anymore. You've got to be able to. And look, you can disagree and still be friends, but vehemently disagree. But yeah. I understand. It's. It's. I. I this way, I could probably never be a. A politician. <laughs> yeah, I think he would be too honest to fit in. <laughs> but yeah, politicians with principles and not afraid to stand for them, that is indeed what we need more of. And I just wanted to wrap with this last question, Robert, because I'm sure you have some views of this. The coming coronavirus fears that are being whispered about again, where do you see this leading? Anthony Fauci talking about the need for face masks again and yada, yada, you know how it goes. But where do you see this leading? Well, we just had COVID. Me, my wife, my 17-year-old. The only one that didn't get it was the unvaxxed four-year-old. <laughs> but the multi-vaxxed people got this new vaccine. <laughs> so, you know, again, this is what I respect about Robert Kennedy Jr., the only one really talking science. Yes. And, and what, what I really get upset about is when people want to blame all of this on Trump, when they want to point the figure, finger at Trump, because initially... If people remember, Trump, Trump was downplaying this, and he was criticized vehemently. Yep, almost like a Mengele kind of Hitlerian uh, evil person, because he was trying to say that. Wait a second, this year, and I they got to him. They, you know, how do you? You're in the White House. You're surrounded by jackals, and there's no hawks in there. There's no hawks in there, really fighting off. The jackals from, or the the, the 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 crows from the from the eagle. So how do you protect that? How do you? So he had to 
you know, so 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 it's a very disingenuous thing to blame Trump because his instinct was correct. And he also talked about now Robert Kennedy Jr. is saying about hydrochloroquine and ivermectin, the success of those uh, alternate drugs. Um, and, and we're finding remdesivir and other things created a lot of problems. So again, and the people are bamboozled. Hollywood will go out again, as they did. And they're saying the masking thing as they all marched along. And you know what's interesting, too? Wind energy. You heard about the whales? No, yeah. I don't care about the environment. Yes. Because it's all connected. It's all connected. Environment, health. I care about that. I did a film in the Amazon rainforest in 1990 when everyone was saying we've got to plant trees. Now they're saying bury trees. <laughs> Cut them down and bury them because they're not. How, how do you, how does any sane person in Hollywood with a straight face come across and say, wait a second, we said this was going to happen now. How can any sane, and what the right has to do is really embrace Hollywood. They don't embrace it enough. Conservatives don't embrace it enough in terms of understanding how people that are in the, Whatever, whatever, if they like, if you can change ten percent of the people, or let them hear it differently, that's affecting something. Because they like a film you've done, or a music thing, or whatever it is. The left knows how to do that beautifully. Yep. The right kind of half-asses it. They really don't know how to do it. You know, and the the whales, three hundred thirty whales on the east coast, are left. 70 were killed from last December to so far this year. 70 of them. Because of what? Wind power. It's it, it's interesting, right, that the left isn't on that, you know, it be, because it, it goes against the environmental radical agenda that they want to push. Yes, and I'm all for cleaning the plastics out of the ocean. You know, I came up with a plan called the Earth Force. I don't know if we ever spoke about this. I don't think we did. All right, the Earth Force is this, Cheryl. The left is saying that the most existential threat to the world, bigger than World War II, the biggest existential threat to the world is global warming and climate change and what's going to happen with the environment and the seas rising and the things melting and this happening and this and that. Right. That's the biggest threat. Bigger than 6 million Jews and 20 million Russians and 5 million Catholics, whatever it is. Bigger than World War II, Hitler. So how come we don't have an Earth Force? We had a draft back then to fight World War II. If this is bigger than that, why don't we have it? Because I'm sick of Gen Z complaining and lying in the streets and screaming <laughs> and throwing shit on paintings. Excuse my language. I'm sick of that. If they really believe this, let Gen Z draft four to six years, 18 to 26 years old, get your ass in the Earth Force, 22 military personnel a day uh, 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 committing suicide. Let them run an Earth Force so when there's an incident that happens in Maui or Ohio, a toxic mishap, or Fort Myers, or there's hurricanes or spills, and we need the in railroads refit and infrastructure, then I could see a $2 trillion infrastructure bill if they had something like that. Where now you had, if, of course, if the seas are going to rise, my God, we're going to have to misplace a lot of people. You know, we're going to need help with that. 18 to 26, kids, you want this. You guys want this. So let's do it. Yeah, and, and instead of, like you said, just blocking off traffic and being being a general public nuisance, how about doing something that actually works, right? What, a, what an right, idea. I, then I could believe. Then I could believe the commitment to what they're saying. Yes. Otherwise, it's self-serving, and it serves a different agenda. It's an agitative, propaganda agitation. <laughs> Absolutely. You're, you're so great to chat with because you don't just give the political bullet points for the party. And that's why I like checking out your Twitter feed as well. It's, it's always great to chat with you, Robert. And I hope you come back on again. I hope in the next couple months you'll be a, a repeat guest again on Bold and Blunt. Well, I would love to. Thank you, Cheryl. And that's a wrap of another Bold and Blunt. If you like Bold and Blunt, you may get Bold and Blunt at edify.app, the online platform for your faith-based podcast at reallifenews at washingtontimes.com, where you may also subscribe to my three times a week newsletter, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And you can get Bold and Blunt wherever podcasts are offered. Tune in next time. And in the meanwhile, don't forget, stay blunt, stay bold.